Is moving to Las Vegas, Nevada worth it? In this video, we'll go through some pros and cons about moving to Las Vegas and let you be the judge. Let's dive in. I made this video especially for all my future clients out there who wants, or actually better yet, needs pro representation. Whether you're a pro athlete, pro fighter, entertainer, white collar or blue collar worker, because well, Las Vegas is the entertainment capital of the world and will soon be the sports capital of the world. And Las Vegas is growing exponentially. I'm seeing a lot of these pro athletes, entertainers, and military personnel who are unsure of how long they will be here rent instead of purchasing. And depending on their needs and the situation, that might be better for them. I understand a lot of individuals and families never know if they'll be here next year or the year after. Or a lot of these fighters frequent Las Vegas just for training camps. So I get it that renting might be a little better for them or easier. As a real estate professional that I am, I am always looking to help my clients build wealth, i.e. make money from an investment standpoint. Instead of renting, purchase if your situation allows. And if you don't happen to stay here in Las Vegas, rent it out for the next person who is unsure of purchasing that is the same situation that you might be in. One of the reasons I am making this video is to help all the new people that may relocate to Las Vegas due to their career. Let's go over the pros and cons of all the potential future Las Vegas residents out there. And you can make the decision if you want to purchase a home out here when you sign that new contract or get that new job. Pro number one, taxes first off. Can you say no state income tax? That's right, whether you're earning personally or through your business, Nevada won't charge you a penny on that income at the state level. And it just gets better for businesses. Nevada says no thank you to corporate income tax and franchise tax as well. That's a double win if you're running a corporation or a franchise. Inheritance tax or estate tax, Nevada doesn't have them. You can pass down your hard earned assets without the state getting involved, which is always nice. Another highlight, property taxes. They are lower than the national average in Nevada. The national average effective property tax rate is about 1.1% of the average of home value. Nevada's property tax rates are among the lowest in the US. The state's average effective property tax rate is just 0.53%. Just to give you an idea, I am going to compare the neighboring state of California, because everybody seems to be moving here, to Nevada on someone making a million dollars. California has a progressive income tax. An income over $1 million is taxed at the state's highest rate of 13.3%. Therefore, a person making $1 million living in Los Angeles would owe about $133,000 in state income tax. Nevada does not have state income tax. So a person making a $1 million living in Las Vegas would not owe anything on state income tax. In summary, Someone making a million dollars in Los Angeles, California, could expect to pay approximately $503,000 in combined federal and state income tax. In contrast, someone making the same amount in Las Vegas, Nevada, would pay approximately $370,000, all of which is federal income tax. Keep in mind, these are just approximations. I'm not a tax expert and I looked this up on the internet. <laughs> Pro number two, how much home you get for your money. Las Vegas, while still could be said that a new city relatively to some of the other major metropolises and is still growing, I'm going to do this by looking at the top five cities with the most entertainment value and compare their median home prices with Las Vegas to give you a general idea what you can get for your money. Now I did this by cross-referencing two articles, the first being CNBC's article, 20 US cities with the biggest entertainment bank for your buck. And the second being fansidemma.com's article, the top 10 biggest fight cities in the world. Number one on both of these articles with the median home price in Las Vegas currently being at $438,000. Number two on the list is New York with the median home price being between $700,000 and $800,000. Number three on the list is Miami with a median home price of $685,000. Number four on the list was Chicago with a median home price of $359,000. Number five on the list, Los Angeles, 
with the median home price of $1 million. This gives you a perspective of what the property values are in each of the metropolises. Now we are not the least expensive, but relatively low compared to the others. This perspective will reflect the luxury market as well. And we have some amazing luxury communities and properties here in Las Vegas. But that's a whole nother video. Pro number three. The weather here, it's amazing in Las Vegas throughout the year. Las Vegas is usually sunny. The city averages about 294 sunny days per year. And even during the winter months, you often find it clear, sunny skies. Having sun that many days out of the year isn't always good because <laughs> summer here in Las Vegas are extremely hot with day temperatures often exceeding 100 degrees. Nights are also warm with the temperature usually around 70 or 80 degrees. This year it's been in the 90s. The city is also known for its monsoon season, which typically occurs mid-July through August, where the city can experience sudden, brief, but intense thunderstorms. With that being said, Las Vegas has some amazing, great outdoors that people aren't aware of. So if you're an athlete and like to train in the outdoors, we have nine solid months out of the year that the weather is perfect to train outdoors in or 12 months if you want to train at nights or really early in the morning. Pro number four, entertainment capital of the world and soon to be sports capital of the world. Las Vegas is known for being a transient city due in most part to the tourism and hospitality industry. Factor in the military, entertainment, and now pro teams that are here, there's always people in limbo on a permanent city to call home or Las Vegas as being a permanent city to call home. Good rentals are easy to rent. For example, I have two military clients that have just moved to Las Vegas. One is renting for a year to get familiar before purchasing a new home. And then the other one doesn't know if they will be stationed here longer than a year. I also see many high profile or high income clients get into rentals from 10K to 20K a month. For example, one client is an entertainer who just got a residency here on the Strip, while we have another client that is waiting for their custom home to be finished. They're both renting out a luxury property at a luxury price. So rentals here, if they're good, they're very easy to rent out and there's no short supply of renters. Summary, with all the growth that the city is experiencing, there is a demand for rentals throughout all markets, demographics, and instead of being the pro athlete or entertainer or military personnel that is renting, be one who has a property to rent. If you don't know me yet, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Shane Judge, a real estate advisor who you go to for all things real estate in the heart of Las Vegas. I specialize in helping people like you relocate, buy, sell, and invest in the vibrant Las Vegas and Henderson market. So if you got your eyes set on the greater Las Vegas area, don't hesitate to get in touch using the contact details in the description below. I'm here to make your real estate journey as seamless as possible. While you're here, go ahead and smash that like button, hit the subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell so you never miss out on when I drop a brand new video. Now with that said, let's continue. Pro number five, growth. Las Vegas has so many new projects going on and events happening right here in Las Vegas, which in turn brings more jobs, more revenue, which in turn equals more housing needs for the city of Las Vegas. We have the Formula One race event. They have signed a 10 year contract alone. This project expected to bring an economic impact of $1.3 billion. And that's just for a three day weekend. We have the Tesla Loop. This is an underground tunnel that runs from Resorts World to the Convention Center. And Tesla plans to build more throughout the Strip. We have the Bullet Train that should be breaking ground at the end of this winter. This is going to run from Rancho Cucamongo all the way to Las Vegas. This is expected to be done by the end of 2028, but we'll see about that. We have Raiders Stadium, which is doing great. Not only does it host the Raiders, it hosts a lot of other games, concerts, national football clubs from around the world. We have the new MSG Sphere, which is a state-of-the-art concert menu, which is nothing short but spectacular. The new Oakland A's Stadium, when the Oakland A's gets here, that's supposed to be where the old Tropicana is. They're planning to have that developed by 2027 the new announcement of the NBA expansion team, 
I can keep going and going with all these projects. We have the World Championship WNBA Aces in town that won the championship last year. Our NHL team, Las Vegas Golden Knights, took home the Stanley Cup this year. And they're new to Las Vegas and both these teams are champions. It was an amazing experience for the city and the community around it to experience a championship pro team here in Las Vegas. Not one, but two. Plus we have all the amazing Las Vegas golf courses that stretch throughout the valley. And the credible business tax incentives that Nevada has is just going to bring more business here. I can go on with these new projects happening and propose to happen in the future, but I won't because I can sit here all day and do this. But in short, the city's growth equals more jobs in every industry sector, from pro sports, entertainment, construction, medical, tech, and so many other industries. This all leads to more housing needs and long-term investment in real estate in Las Vegas seems like a win-win from what the data tells us. Now, I just want to see if you're paying attention who were the two Las Vegas teams who won the championship recently? <laughs> Was it A, the A's and the Raiders, or B, the Golden Knights and the Aces? Well, let's get back into some of these cons of moving to Las Vegas. Con number one, temptation. Las Vegas is often referred to as Sin City due to its long-standing reputation for adult entertainment, including gambling, drinking, nightlife, and various forms of adult entertainment. The moniker is largely tied to the city's image as a place where the traditional rules and morals can be set aside for the pursuit of pleasure. One can swiftly get caught up in the life of chasing the never fulfilling temptations of self-indulgence. Who doesn't enjoy a little gambling or nightlife or even as innocent as going out to eat without self-discipline or a good supporting cast around you? These temptations can bleed you dry. That's never a good thing. In short, if you can't control your undesirable urges or have someone around you to help control them for you, Las Vegas might not be the place for you to call home. Con number two, growth. As much as it's a pro, it can be a con as well. With growth comes overpopulation, cities growing at a rapid pace can become overly congested, placing a strain on resources and infrastructure. This means your kid's classroom might become overcrowded, hospital waits times could be increased and your daily commute may take longer than you'd like, which it does currently right now with all the road construction. Overall, quality of life can take a hit, noise pollution, longer commute times, and higher living costs can all add up, making life in the city less enjoyable than you might have anticipated. If you're wanting that country living on plots of land that spans 10 plus acres with no neighbors within miles, Las Vegas might not be the place for you. Sure, we have plenty of homes that sit on acres with more than enough privacy, but nothing like the huge 10 acre plots out in the country where you can set up skeet shooting in your backyard. So if you're looking for the big, huge lots, Las Vegas might not be the place for you. Con number three, climate. Las Vegas is located in the desert, which means the climate is hot and arid. Summers can be extremely hot with temperatures often exceeding 100 degrees. The lack of humidity can also be hard on the skin and respiratory system for some individuals. If you have health issues with being in the dry climate, Las Vegas or anywhere in the Southwest with the exception of the coast of California, probably not the place for you to call home. What do you think so far? Is Las Vegas worth moving to? Leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about Las Vegas so far. Now let's get back to the cons. Con number four, the season. The change in the seasons breaks up the monotony of having the same weather all year round. It brings diversity in temperature and scenery, providing a refreshing change every few months. The shift in the season can create breathtaking natural beauty from the vibrant colors of autumn leaves the serene blanket of winter snow, the blossoming of flowers in the spring, and the bright sunlit days of the summer. Each season has its own unique appeal. So in Las Vegas, it's usually sunny. We do get the changing of the seasons with temperatures, but still, we are in the desert and we don't get the fall colors and the spring blossoms that are distinctly noticeable. So if changing of the seasons is something that makes your soul happy, Las Vegas 
might not be the place for you to call home. Con number five, lack of high rises. Now don't get me wrong, Las Vegas has several notable residential high rises, including Turnberry Towers, Turnberry Place, Panorama Towers, The Martin, Newport Loft, Salir, Ogden, Jewel, and others but those are within the vicinity of the Strip. But there is only one luxury high rise off the Strip, which is one Queen Bridge place. If you are like me, I appreciate everything a high rise luxury has to offer, from the amenities to the penthouse views overlooking the surrounding areas. Without the hustle and bustle, AKA traffic of being in or around the Strip. But there is a new project coming that I am very excited for in McDonald Highlands. It's called the Four Seasons Private Residences. And this will be the first new high rise built in Las Vegas since the Great Recession in the late 2000s. So if you like high rises outside of the Strip and the hustle bustle, we do not have many. If you're hungry for more insight about making a move to fabulous Las Vegas, don't miss out on the wealth of information in my other videos. Just click on the one that's popping up on your screen right now. I truly appreciate your time and for joining me on this journey. Don't forget there's plenty more coming up. So I can't wait to catch you on the next one. Keep exploring, stay curious, and thanks so much for watching.